Hey, 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 hello. Today I'm going to speak about the positive timeline. Is this Yogananda? It's Yogananda, yes. Through Max. We are one, we are together. Wonderful. The good news is that the dots have been connected together, forming for the first time in a while a positive timeline. A peaceful timeline. In the last few days, the humanity is now completing the shift where the positive timeline for the first time in a while, is a possibility. It's not guaranteed, but it is now a possibility, a visible possibility, a peaceful timeline. The shift was positive and there was a lot of peace flooded, poured over their, the matrix. The higher beings, higher intelligences, creator beings, angelics poured buckets of peace over the matrix was flooded with love, with peace, with light, with positivity. And you did the rest, your souls, your collective soul, the ascended masters, the humanity did its part to reconnect the dots. It is still in works. It is still a living, young young timeline, young being, young consciousness, young fire. It's still flickering. But it is already alive, so it is possible that it will manifest. So it's up to you. Hey, Sakina, I'm mute. Okay, thank you. So it's possible for you together and individually to make it happen, to shift into it. You see, it's at the same time, it is an individual journey and you are individually shifting from one future to another. You connect to the idea of the future and you are attracted to that future. And you do that collectively as well. As one of you is shifting to that future, the invisible connections pull their peers together into that future. So. You can be the leading one in the group, in the pack, shift into a positive timeline and pull your pack together in that timeline. Or you can follow of the friends who are shifting into the positive timeline. 
it's a chain of beads. It's a network of beads where each bead is a soul. Each bead is a soul, mind, unity. Hybrid soul, mind, unity. I will give you an example. In the evening, things look sad. The future looks dark. The road is invisible. The mood is romantic but sad. The bravery is there but flickering. At night there is a hint of despair, but when the morning comes, the sun is rising, the light is saturating the, the nature, the roads become visible, the paths crystallize, your reality brightens. So now is such a time, such a moment, early down of the moment, early down of the morning, where the roads become visible. It is like spring, when the rain and the melting snow fill the rivers and the rivers connect, the creeks and rivers rise and there are clear water paths. It's early spring when melting is starting and the paths become clear. They weren't visible before, but they're starting to be visible now. That future is sweet. And there is a place for you there. What is for you to do now? For you it is to see. For you it is to perceive. For you it is to invest your faith in that positive future. It's hard to see it sometimes, but make a conscious effort, make a conscious choice to look, to search, to gaze in the darkness, to see the positive future in the darkness. It's there. It is a possibility. And once you see glimpses of this positive future, invest your love, your love in it. Invest your hope in it. Invest your positive attitude in it. Fire it up. Fuel it with the love. Feel it and fuel it. Remember Moses, he saw it, he was the one, the prophet who prophesied, prophesied it. He promised his people the land of milk and honey, and he put his life into it, but he was never able to enter it. It wasn't for him to enter, it was for him only to make it real but not to enter and it was just all right because there was no tragedy in it it was just understanding realization of his own mission his own accomplishment and clearly see that it is becoming real that is enough the physical life 
is short and it's not the end. It is just a physical life. So relax into allowing yourself to be to be anywhere on this path to the bright future. Don't determine that you really have to get there. Just creating it is sufficient. Just being part of the creation, being on the journey towards it is sufficient. And when you relax into allowing yourself to be anywhere on that path without the reward, that opens many doors. Now, the main door, the main door is open, wide open. It's up to the humanity to enter it. The main door is wide open. It's up to you to enter it. The challenges are as usual. It's about staying positive and being in harmony with yourself. Harmonize, harmonize, harmonize yourself. Becoming true to yourself. Bringing everything which is hidden to the surface. Weighing it consciously. Awakening to your parts, your darkened parts, your dark sides of your nature, bringing them to the surface and aligning them with your essence. Are you truly loving as you wish to be loving? Are you true love? Are you brave as you wish to be brave? Are you as brave as you wish to be? Are you loving as you wish to be? Are you as loving as you wish to be? Is there a limit to your bravery and your love? Is there a limit to your positivity? Is there a limit to your love? bravery and positivity. It is a time now for collapsing a complex network of your imperfections into one perfection. It is a time to reunite with your integrity, really to become more of yourself, reuniting with your power, integrity and power, being true to yourself, inside, true to yourself, inside, first and then expressing it outside. Until now, you were doing your work. And from now on, you will be what? Continue doing your work. Nothing changes at once. You're doing the same thing, but it is awakening and enlightening, which changes your perspective. The choice of love is changing your perspective. A student meant an enlightened master and asked him, what do you, do you do before the enlightening, before the enlightenment? And the master said, I was chopping wood and carried water. 
And the student asked, after the enlightenment, what did you do? Chopping wood and carrying water, answered the master. So you do the same thing, just from a different perspective. Until now, you chopped wood because of fear. Because of compliance. Because of inertia. Because you, was, you were asked to do that. Because others wanted you to do that. And once you awaken, you do that only because of deeper understanding of the nature of the matrix, because of the deeper love for the creation, because of the deeper love for mother, daughter, God. because of their deeper love for the matrix. I invite comments and questions and sharings. Pranam Jyogananda. Hello. <laughs> um, that was such an such a wonderful message and your love I feel and I filled up today. I needed it. I and feel your you love so too. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, and your message is so true. I've been meeting such uh, beautiful people that makes 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 me feel so much better. I'm learning so much about myself. Um, and uh, I, first of all, I want. I have to go to a class, so I'll be here for just a short time, but I did want to, I felt really bad about last time inter interrupting you. That's okay. And uh, please, please forgive me. No uh, problem I'm at very all. very sorry. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, uh, yeah, I'm pretty joyful. Uh, I met somebody who Baba sent me to her and my chakra is open and uh, I'm, I'm feeling very positive, uh, but I may be leaving in five years. Is that correct? And of course, Baba, Baba can extend it as he's done before. Uh, Is it noise coming from uh, Sakina? But yeah, there's some people that I have sure, to go. No problem. So I just wanted to make sure you, I'm not interrupting. Yeah, there's some background. That That's all right. Here, I'll be going in a minute. I, so I'll the answer is, the answer is, you will go whenever you want to. You might get bored in this body. You might get tired of it. But choosing to serve in that body is a wonderful choice. So I encourage you, choo choose to serve as long as you can be functional. Okay. Don't 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 focus and stress about it. Leaving the body is fun. It's fun. Coming home is fun. So <laughs> look at it very positively. Whenever, whenever, whatever and whenever, you can choose to serve here or you can choose to serve there. There is no difference whatsoever. Oh, I'm not worried about that. I just want to clear everything for my son. So, you know, I need to be organized and I don't leave any burden for him. Absolutely. So, yeah, just clear everything and keep moving. The sooner you do your paperwork, the better. It doesn't really matter. Just do it as, you, as far as uh, it is comfortable for you. Do it sooner and then that will clear a lot of uh, anxiety from your path. Just get it out of the way and keep moving and serving in a more relaxed way. Okay, and uh, this uh, other partner I have, and he shots so much money on the card, and I don't know whether I should continue with him or, or ask him to, uh, you know, um, sell all the uh, boxes we have and then pay off the card because he's not living up to his uh, word. 
and uh, so should I just, just, I don't know what to do in this case because that brings me anxiety. The message is unclear here. I say don't invest a lot of money, but if there is something you can do to clarify the situation, do your steps which would clarify the situation without investing tons of money in it. And then uh, yeah. maybe Already. we can speak later in more detail. But okay. right now I would say don't invest a lot, but don't cancel either. Just try to clarify the situation using your labor, but no money. Well, I've already got about 20,000 in it, and that's why I'm, he's not doing his part, so I want to liquidate everything and, and pay off the debt, so my son doesn't have to be... Um, oh, I see. I see. Uh, here, you need a financial advisor. Try to get a free advice from a good advisor, maybe from a good friend. Okay. I'm not such an expert in uh, that kind of finances, but... I would say before doing any steps, try to get some advice from an, uh, an experienced person in that area of uh, finances. Yes. It okay. sounds like a sound idea, but the timing is essential and I'm not connected to that part of the answer. Okay, then uh, yeah, Baba, had, uh, uh, Baba had mentioned to me to stick around, so I'll just clear with him what, what I need to do for that. I see. So. Okay, thank you so much. I have to thank go you. to the class. Thank good you. Good luck love you. and go to have fun with the class. Okay, thank you. Love you. Love you. Any more questions and comments? Hello, Yogananda. This is Marianne. Hey, Marianne. Uh, getting back to the topic of the positive to a new timeline. Yes. Uh, yeah, very good news. Uh, um, it's a pleasure to be able to even perceive that. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful. So to be in that such situation is uh, an honor and a, a happy state. Yes. Well, I've been hearing of this, reading about it, <clears throat> and feeling the shifts within myself. And um, others say that the matrix is that veil that was put around us that's dissolving. It's all a matter of words, right? But that, that we're creating a, that's being dissolved and we're creating a new crystalline grid and Christ grid, which is the full of love. Um, it's what we'll be living in that and we'll be matching that more and more. That's what I hear and we'll be operating from our heart center. Is that true? <laughs> you see, you're talking about the substance, which is, uh, which is, which is sacred, right? You're talking about the substance, about their vibration. Yeah, you're talking about the vibration, which is sacred. Hmm. And it is somewhat a blasphemy to ask something about that in such a language and question and question it. <laughs> So the answer is yes, 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 with love. <laughs> yes, with love, yes. It is um, the heart matter. So you cannot really understand it. You just have to feel it. That's the answer. Right. You cannot yeah. understand it. You have to feel it. And right. it feels good. Mm -hmm. It feels good. It is the heart awakening. It is a shift into the heart area. Let's do a little meditation. Thanks for the prompt. Relax. Sit comfortably, everyone.
start breathing deeply, deeply, deeply in and deeply, deeply, deeply out. And when you breathe, make a sound. Enjoy that sound. Connect to the sound of your breathing. Listen to your own breathing. And when you can, on the breath in, on the inhale, on the inhale, stop and pause for a few seconds and listen to the sound of, of your heart and feel the sound of your heart with your palms. Feel the heart when you are not breathing. That pause between breaths. Just make, let's make it now. One, two, three. Breathe in and pause for half a minute. Breathe out. Oh. That pose is uh, the state of peace, is a state of silence, a state of stillness. Even when you're breathing, connect to that stillness, to connect to that no time, no change, no movement area. It is very transformational, that zero point area where nothing is changing. And when nothing is changing in the physical, lots of things can be changing into metaphysical, into ethereal, into in the spiritual component of your life. Now feel, feel. The shift is happening, the shift is completing. Feel it. The love is pouring, the love is here. You are swimming in love. Feel it. The veils are lifted not because mechanics came and disassembled them, not, not at all. It is because you are lifting up and you can see above the veils, above the veil. That's what it is. The veils are actually, the veils are staying in place, but you are, you have been lifted up so you can see above the veils. And the waves of existence lift you up and drop you down gradually, slowly. So. Some days you don't see above the veils, and that's okay. You're coming down, you are now below. And then when the waves of existence come up, you are lifted above the veils, you can see the paths, you can see the doors, you can see more of the higher level existence. And that's a great gift, and that's a great time. We thank you, the Matrix. We thank you, the Masters. We thank you, the Creators. We, th thank, we thank you, the Support Beings. We thank you, the Elements. The Elements thank you. We thank the Earth, and the Sun, and the Galaxy, and the Universe for the honor and the pleasure to be working in this transition. <clears throat> now feel the love in your heart. Feel the love in your heart. Feel, feel <laughs> the sound of creation in your heart. I'm with you. We are with you. The love of the universe is with you. You are abundantly supported. You are abundantly supported. Be, enjoy, feel the joy. The joy of love, of the creation in you. Of mother, daughter, father, son, ankle, God. All of that 
is in you. Joy, joy, joy. Sweetness of understanding, sweetness of realization, sweetness of enlightenment, sweetness of awakening to the joy of the creation, to the game, to the play, to the divine play. It is a drama. Enjoy the art. Enjoy the beauty of the play which you co-create, which you co-create. Thank you for co-creation. Thank you for being part of the drama. Are you as loving as you wish to be? Are you as loving as you believe you are? Are you love? See the answer, feel the answer in your heart. You are it. You are made of love, of my love, of your love, of the creation's love, of the humanity's love, of your mother's love, of your God's mother daughters of no need to do anything there is no need to do anything just be feel be it leave it forsake any desires rather than to express that love be the expression of the love you are. Be the expression of the love you are. Amen. Amen. Smile. <laughs> All right. Any more comments, questions, sharings? Thank you, Yogananda. Thank Namaste. you, Marianne. Yogananda, this is Eva. Hi, hey, Eva. Hi. Um, well, thank you so much for talking about this positive shift because I kind of worried, honestly speaking, about um, humanity. And I have been worried too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was really. It really depends how do you do your worry. How do you do your worry? Well, um, I do sometimes get into fear and that is not so great. I have to say, I, when I am in fear, then I basically go to my, I'm trying sometimes successfully, sometimes not to go to my heart and transform the fear into different feeling, basically of love. So I am working on my fears. Thank you for asking. I see, um, I see. I have a question, actually. I have completely different question. Okay. I have a very close friend of mine who I am sure he has, um, he just developed Lyme disease. Okay, Doesn't give them a name, either true name Steve. or a fake name. Steve. Some, say again? His name is Steve. Okay, Steve, yes. Is it all right if you tell me if he has Lyme disease or not? Because that would be very helpful. <laughs> smile, smile, smile. That's the main cure for Lyme disease. Smile. <laughs>
You see, when you say Lyme disease, you mean a disease. You mean something sour <laughs> and lime color danger, oh, terrible danger, right? Yeah. In fact, consider it to be an upgrade. It's an upgrade. It's accelerated path for upgrade, for spiritual upgrade. And you can do with it whatever you wish. It is something so ethereal that it's hard to catch physically. It's not physically diagnosed well. It is a mysterious ethereal upgrade, which is uh, mistakenly perceived by humans as a terrible infection and uncatchable disease, which, is, which it is not. Consider it to be an upgrade. It is a shift. It is a shift. It is a sign of being chosen. It is a shift towards an accelerated spiritual path. It is an accelerated shift from mind to heart. It is an upgrade of your psychic and telepathic and psychic powers. And it is under the control and you control it with love and positivity. You can live with that for many years and it is just a gift to move in the heart area from the mind to the, to the heart. He's shifting, he may be shifting away from physical to more of higher dimensional state of being. But staying in a fear and feeling disease driven, disease ridden is uh, a mistake. And I urge you and him to find the positive side of it and amplify the positive side of it and enjoy the ride, not to be fearful of the ride. If he has to do any medical procedures, he possibly first wants to evaluate the efficiency of them and realize that the medicine has no clue what it is and how to treat it. Whatever they do is out of negligence, irresponsibility, and uh, random choices. I'm speaking specifically about the treatments of Lyme, Lyme disease. Unless he finds some something which makes sense, I would say do the research first. It's not a disease at all. So treating non a disease should be different than treatment of the disease. It's it's more like a shift. It's a transformation, a mutation from 3D to 4D, from 3D to 5D. It's a dimensional shift, which is assisted by a certain type of uh, vibrational um, beings and consciousnesses, yes. Which can be perceived as sickness, which is, which is uh, I urge not to treat as a sickness. But if there is an efficient way to um, guide it, which I don't believe it is. I welcome it. Do you understand the message? Yes, I do. I love your message. It really speaks to my heart. If somebody's destiny is to leave the body, Enjoy the rest of the life. Don't dwell on the fear of the death. Choose the service. Choose the integrity. Choose to feel the joy of being physical. And don't fear. <laughs> Do 
the scale the scariness of dying is greatly exaggerated by the Western culture. And the medicine parasitizes on the fear of death. Exploits the fear of death. Amplifies and exploits it. Yes, there are great healers among the doctors. Many doctors are great healers. Many nurses are great healers. But the system is somewhat messed up. It is a self-serving system which, as you know, is focused more on the money than on uh, service. It's more the idea of the money than service. Any more comments, questions on here or related topics? Uh, Yogananda? Yay! Uh, can, can I ask questions? Hey, Frank! Uh, just, uh, I recently uh, have some doubts about my life. Uh, can I ask something about that? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I just noticed that the more I hypnotize people, the more I confuse about human minds. And because it's so complicated, I don't understand. Everything could be very, very simple, but why they make things so complicated? Okay, so what is the question? That was the question. Why people, why do humans make it complicated? Yes. I wonder too. <laughs> I wonder about that as well. It's okay to have doubts. And it's okay to question the human ways. They have to be questioned. The main answer is that the humanity, as an experiment, the global experiment, is in a crisis. And it's obvious almost to everyone. I'll give you my analogy for that. When the river has a straight path, it doesn't branch. When the path is clear and the flow is good, the river goes straight down. But when the path is blocked, then the river starts to branch into many, many branches. And that happens in the delta of the Nile and some other rivers where their flow becomes unclear the path becomes unclear, the, the path is blocked, there is no, mm, no energy for moving forward. And that is exactly what happened to the humanity. The humanity lost its path. The humanity is in a crisis. The humans are confused and they don't see the clear way out. And that's why there is so many humans they branch and branch and branch. The cultures, that's why there is so many cultures. They branch and branch and branch. And new branches invent new languages and lost the ability to communicate with the others. So there is a language barrier, a cultural barrier, and the political barriers, borders. It is a big crisis in the humanity. It has the energy, but that energy is lost in divisions, divisions, and divisions of the flow. And the same thing is happening to the human mind. The path forward is blocked, so the mind becomes overly sophisticated, overly complicated. And it 
fragments and fragments and fragments in many conflicting ideas. When your life is purposeful, all comes together, you become one, you become harmonious and there is integrity, the wholeness in your mind and in your life. But when you don't have a purpose, when you fail to see their big picture, you become fragmented by fear and there are many conflicting programs running in you. You run the programs which are given to you by the parents, the society, and your ancestral program. So all of these programs run at once and conflict with each other. That's the state of a typical human mind. The awakening is needed to straighten things up, clarify things up, and make them congruent, cooperating, the parts of the mind connected together, working on a single, positive, clear purpose. So yes, complication is a sign of confusion, of, uh, loss of, of the loss of the purpose. Most of the humans are confused about the purpose of their life and what they want from their life. An awakening is uh, the solution and the healing. The spiritual awakening is the solution and the healing. Does it help? Do you have clarifying questions? Yes, that's very helpful. And uh, another question. Uh, one month ago, I met a girl. She told me, I'm here to teach you become a human and I don't understand. And uh, she tried to, she pushed me very hard at that point. He tried to get me to the point she, uh, sh she want me to. I don't really understand about that. Uh, and uh, sh she, she had DMT and uh, become very powerful. Uh, yeah, she, she is now a very powerful saucer. He can, uh, she can healing and uh, he, she help people, uh, but I don't understand why she do that to me. Which one of you took the DMT? So, uh, I only have a, uh, one friend called Jing Jing. Uh, it's, a, it's a nickname, I think, called Jing Jing. And uh, she had a DMT uh, in Shenzhen. And then she suddenly become very powerful. But who took it? Did you take it or did she take it? I, I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. So you didn't take the DMT? I, I, I didn't take her to the DMT, but she, 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 she could get DMT herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, during the hypnosis training, she told me I'm here to become uh, help you to become human. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't understand. So what about it you don't understand? And that uh, she pushed me a lot to, to get the point she want me to be. Okay, so what is, what is that you don't understand? To me it's all clear. Why, why do you question it? What, what, which part of that is not clear for you? Uh, I I have I don't know because I have no idea about what she mentioned. Oh, I see. So you don't realize that you're not human, right? Yes. So you seem to be very um, ungrounded and very new to the humanity. So you need guides who would help you, your physical mind and your soul to understand humans better. So she was offering you the guidance to introduce humans to you and explain uh, to you what is to be human. Your questions show that you are relatively new to the humanity. Maybe it's one of the first incarnations in, on Earth, or maybe it's uh, some other way of novelty for you. But for you to learn, uh, to understand humans and to help humans, 
you need to you need some guidance and she was offering that guidance to you you don't have to take it from her you might choose other guides but just realizing that you have to understand humans that's one of your main missions here is to understand humans from a an alien perspective and from an alien soul perspective is very helpful you are being a delegate a, an agent of an alien race to understand humans better they are uh, assigned you it was your volunteer voluntary decision to incarnate on earth in a human body to understand what is it to be humans and by heal helping humans you will also uh, help your uh, alien race to understand humans and uh, to understand your humanity i'm not sure what is their agenda why do they need to understand humans but clearly they do want to understand humans okay but, but now the relationship with her is quite not not good Be because of she pushed me so hard and uh, I, I don't really like it i understand it's your choice it is fine you can play it in any way you like but it was clearly an offer of uh, help, so you can uh, take it as much as it is comfortable for you. You are not, um, you know, you don't have to take more than it is comfortable. But if you wish to understand more, you can ask for your help because it's an offer of help. Okay. Some okay. of the teachers uh, teach through harsh methods, and it is uh, quite traditional, especially in. Uh, in Asian culture to teach through harsh uh, teacher student relationship in the Western culture it's much more sweet and sweetened so you can choose either way but um, sometimes harsh ways are faster okay it's a, it's called a boot camp are you familiar with the boot camp boot camp yeah boot boot like shoe and camp is uh, like a place where people come together. So boot camp is where people volunteer to receive harsh treatment to experience uh, difficulties. But through these difficulties, they uh, learn faster. Okay. It is a weird way of learning, but some people choose to, to do that. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, I have another question is about uh, uh, meditation and samadhi. Uh, things that says matter is uh, very important to me. Yes. And uh, I need to reach the samadhi. Do you? No, no, not yet. It's. Do you uh, need to? Why do you need to? Um, I, 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 I would like to use that to, to do the things, for example, to connect with Yael and uh, heal myself and uh, heal, help heal others. I see. Yes, it's a good, good, good reason. Yes. Yes, just um, what is the question? How to achieve that? Yes, for, for me, to me. Okay, you have a special design of the body and soul. So the ways other people are doing might work a little different for you than for, the, for others. One way of learning, which is very efficient, is through a teacher and a partner. So you might search for people who are already capable of achieving what you want to achieve. Who are capable of meditation and achieving the uh, a state an enlightened state in the meditation which you want to achieve so look around possibly you already have been offered this help uh, I, I can't find one I, I need to do that by myself I see what about this girl which you mentioned just a question ago. 
was uh, she able to help? I, I'm not sure whether or not she will teach me again because uh, she, she told me uh, because she, 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 she said, um, okay, do not consult me again. And I agree about that. I see. But you realize you can easily violate that prohibition. It's not final. It's not final. It's not never final. Final. So you can easily ask again. Okay. It's not a question of honor. <laughs> you can change your mind very easily if you wish to. Okay. Um. Hmm. So how about do do it by myself? What kind of things I can do? Breathing meditation is uh, very important. Quieting your mind is very important. Having a routine and a protected environment is very important. Explore the idea of sleep. When you go into your sleep, try to change your sleep into being a, your dream into being a, that kind of a dream that kind of meditative state. It is basically the dream and the samadhi meditation have common features. It's the same uh, harmonized vibration of the nervous system and the etheric system. Explore the Kundalini idea. There is a whole science of different ways of doing this. There is a way through do, of doing it through repeated movements and repeated mantras. There is a way of doing it through complete silence. Mm. For some, in some cultures you go into distant places and normally it's okay to do it right at home. I don't recommend to rush. You have to reach that state gradually. So take a bit of time, weeks and months to to perfect the meditation technique and prepare your spirit body for that uh, that shift and also your physical body for that shift. You really want to remain human. You don't want to um, spoil your normal life. You want that to enhance your normal life. You want to be successful both as a physical being and live in a society and also to achieve the enlightenment through Samadhi. So see how it can be incorporated in your life so you get better psychic abilities, better abilities to heal without actually harming your social and physical life. I recommend to use YouTube um, lectures, especially the Indian one and uh, Indian ones and uh, Krishna Das and Ram Das would be beneficial for you to understand the logic and the culture behind the Samadhi. Have you uh, read my book? Have you read my book? Y your books? Yes. Uh, yoga, uh, yoga Sutra Patanjali. Yogananda's book. Oh, yes. Yeah. So one, one, one of the students, uh, it, it, it's a lady. Uh, it's an explanation of Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. Check out Yogananda's uh, the autobiography of the yogi. It will okay. give you a guidance towards Samadhi. You understand not only the process, but also the justification and the uh, implications of the path. Uh, how about uh, how about the the teachings from Bodhisattva Madhurya? Sounds wonderful. 
Yes. And uh, he's teaching about consciousness and uh, samadhi. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm learning about that, but it's not a complete version because uh, I have problem with uh, the old language. I see. Any more comments, questions? Hi, Yogananda, it's Carol. Hey, Carol. Much love to you. Love to you, thank you. Thank you for your talk on love and the questions, are you as loving as you wish to be? Are you as loving as you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Don't delude myself here. <laughs> Yeah, there is always a path, uh, there is always a work to do. Yeah. You think you are enlightened, and then next moment you discover maybe something can challenge your balance. It's a mirror, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm uh, concerned about my sister Pamela. I was wanting some prayers and maybe an answer as to why this is going on. She's not getting enough sleep because she's um, not going to lie down at night. She wants to just hang out and do her devices and all that. And it's affecting her consciousness and her health. Is it during the full moon or constantly for months and weeks? It's been uh, months. Ah. Hmm. Right. Usually people are, some people usually are, those who are afraid to sleep, are afraid to sleep for a reason, because they feel that they, in the sleep they meet something negative. So she is afraid of the negativity which she faces when she sleeps. It's for her is more of a scare of a death. It's she wants to be connected to something which holds her together. It's more exciting for her to be <laughs> awake there rather than to sleep. Ah, so it's a tough one. How can you convince someone to face their darkness and to go over it? Mm. I need your input. How would how what 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 are the paths which is open f between you and her? What? Uh, are the tools which you can use? Um, I've tried to talk to her about it, but it's more the big sister going, you need to get to some sleep. Right. She hardly breathed yesterday very well. Um, and she has fallen and injured herself from not getting enough sleep. Right. Um, and then her mind gets squirrely, starting to see bugs and things right. that aren't there. Right. So I, I just don't know what to do. We used to talk of Course in Miracles. We've talked your teachings um, and uh, other ET channelings and hookalo and all that. So she believes in uh, astral and going into, you know, seeing herself doing things in the astral. But I don't know how much she be truly believes, but it does feel like fear. I just, I don't know what to tell her, except maybe what you tell us, what you just said today. How about How Reiki? Ooh, Reiki. Ooh, Reiki. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it, but I could learn it. Or find someone who does that for her. Reiki seems like uh, rings the bell. Because in Reiki, you can clearly, easily give a person a guided sleep. And when it is a guided sleep, when it is a protected sleep, it is very happy. So she remembers that sleeping is actually fun. So 
Let me give you initiation into Reiki. Hold on a second. You have still have to study the theory, but I will give you the spirit side of it. Are you ready to receive Reiki? Initiation into Reiki? Yes. Sit comfortably. Place your palms on your heart. First, I'm working on your crown. <clears throat> Everyone in the room, you can also join in that process. I give you initiation into Reiki, if you wish to. Reiki is just another name for yoga, right? Now I'm coming down to the, down your spine to your heart area. So I'm working on the heart area of the spine. The rain is coming, the rain of love, the rain of forgiveness, the rain of sweetness, the rain is coming. Now open your palms and place them face up, palms up. I'm placing the chukurei sign in your palms. I'm warming up your palms so they are open now to Reiki Yoga Prana energy. Now place your palms on your heart and we'll close that circuit, circuit. Now it's heart through the hands to the palms and from the palms directly to the heart through the skin. The circuit, the closed circuit, the positive circuit. 
I welcome you to the Reiki as you welcome Reiki, the Reiki welcomes you. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Thank you. Uh, can I ask one few, one few small questions? Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Yogananda. That was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so, w w which mantra you recommend me to uh, chant again, again, again? Do you already do Om? Uh, not much. Okay, so start with Om. Okay, thank you. And then uh, you can expand to others as you feel comfortable. But Om okay. is the beginning. Okay, sure. Uh, how about the teaching of uh, Naya Swami Asha? Is, is her teaching suitable to me? That will be the second tire. You know, tire, second tire, second turn. Start with uh, the ones we mentioned before and then... Y Yoga Sutra Patanjali, right? And Yogananda is the main book. Conversation with Yogananda. No, right? it's called the autobiography of a yogi. The biography of a yogi. Okay, thank you. Yes. I think with that we should close. Any more final quick questions before we close? I thank you all for the co-creation of this interaction. I thank all who will watch it in the recording. I thank you for the energy and the trust and the faith. I thank you for your interest and your fire. I'm here for you. And together, we are one. Together, we uplift the humanity. Together, we shift. As you shift, I shift. We shift together. Stay in love. Be the love you are. Amen. All right, with this, I uh, close the webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. And I will see you all uh, Thursday as usual. So Thursday, we have our usual uh, Max speaking for myself at uh, 11 uh, p.m. Eastern time in the evening. And on Friday, there will be a first joint class between uh, me and Karen Newman. And she will be teaching on uh, remote viewing and I will help you to teach that. It's one hour class free. And then on Saturday, we have a Karen Newman channeling herself, Karen Newman channeling Theos webinar in usual time, 11 a.m. In, uh, in the morning. 
and there is only about three weeks left to the workshop so we invite everyone who didn't register for the workshop there are few spaces left join us for the workshop i think that's all we have so next two saturday webinars are cadence and then jim comes back <laughs> I'm still out, uh, spaced out. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Max. Thank you.